So the men in the study likely had pre-existing obesity and overweight-related factors contributing to the problem and also low testosterone. And these conditions may have confounded the observed association with semaglutide. So again, correlation, not causation. They looked at chart notes. It was an observational study as well. And they basically decided that with the use of this peptide that potentially these men had ED and or low testosterone with use. So kind of the same limitations, right? Kind of the same limitations. Um, we didn't get specifics on dosage. Again, the study likely examined doses within the therapeutic range for weight management, the high end being 2.4 milligrams of semaglutide. However, it's unclear if all patients were consistently using the highest approved dose or a range of doses. So I think, again, this might very much be a dosing and management issue, extreme weight loss, right? Um, too fast, too intense. Crushing of appetite is going to definitely decrease your intake of protein. Loss of muscle mass is all of those things that happen when you have extreme weight loss that's too fast, or you're not fighting to protect the muscle you have, you're going to end up with ED and low, t and low T. Like that's just <laughs> that's just how it is. You're also going to end up with those when you are dealing with obesity and type 2 diabetes. So you're looking at a group of people, again, already at risk for this. This is very common in men. I mean, one of the easiest ways, guys who are listening and women who love your men, one of the easiest ways to optimize a man's T level, a woman's even too, is to eat a protein-heavy diet, lift heavy weights, get your metabolic health in check, there's no way any of us are going to have balanced hormones if our metabolic health is not in check. Like it's just, it's a misnomer. So you can take all the supplements you want that all the influencers want to sell you. But if you're not metabolically sound at the end of the day, like your fertility is in question, your health is in question. We have lots of studies showing, uh, I did a whole podcast about it, um, talking about the benefits to the genitourinary system, if you will, in both men and women with the use of GLP-1s. You can go back and listen to that episode too. So anyway, the study was observational, making it vulnerable to confounding factors. It could not establish causality, but only an association between semaglutide use and increased risk for ED and hypogonadism. The sample size, um, limited sample size, especially for subgroups by age, BMI, and comorbidities may have reduced the study's generalizability. The focus on non-diabetic males may not fully account for potential differences in response across other populations. Why would somebody be on high doses of semaglutide if they were not diabetic? Well, it's because they're obese, right? So obesity is going to definitely, definitely um, cause issues with all kinds of your virility. Like you just can't be, you just can't be fully in your power as a man when you're lugging around excess weight that's pro-inflammatory. It, it just doesn't line up. I mean, I've, I've ran thousands of labs on people and it just never, like it's pretty easy. Once we start getting the needle to move on the weight loss and we start seeing muscle mass improve with the strength training, things get real clear real fast. And then if we need to supplement or do some HRT there, then we can. But very often men are able to really optimize what they have. And so again, it's that one-two punch we do clinically or I do is like, let's optimize what we got. That's non-negotiable. That's why we have to do all the things. But then maybe we're going to use some hormones as needed, right? But we can keep the dosage of those as low as humanly possible if the person's really doing all the things that matter. So Weight loss itself, rather than semaglutide, could influence T levels and ED. Rapid or extreme weight loss is known to affect the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis, which may independently contribute to hypogonadism and ED. So there's a lot going on here. Other lifestyle or medication factors were not fully controlled for. Maybe they're smokers. Maybe they're sedentary. Maybe they're not, you know, there is a use it and lose it to this. So one of the women too, hear me out. There's a use it and lose it here. So if you're not regularly engaging in you're going to have potential for ED. I mean, that's just a kind of a standard known thing in the community. So the doctors know it, whether they say it or not. The study did not explore the biological mechanisms underlying the association. It remains unclear whether the effects of T levels and ED are direct effects of semaglutide or secondary to weight loss or metabolic changes. There was a short follow-up period and it was self-reported outcomes. So anyway, you guys can check that study out. Let me get the title for you. Um, I'll link it in the, I don't want to keep saying the words, so I'll link it in the show notes for you. 